What's up guys? Welcome to the Skeleton Closet where we talk celebrity news and hot topics. Today we're getting into Bachelor and Bachelorette Nation drama. Will there be a new host? What's going on with Rachel Kirkenell? Who's going to get the final rose? All that type of stuff. Jim Acosta went to CPAC this weekend and what happened to him? Andrew Cuomo and the allegations that he's facing as well as Megan and Harry sit down with Oprah to tell all of the Royals business. We have to get into all that, so let's get into the video. I'm gonna just run down my shout outs. Hey, dun -dun. <laughs> all right, to start, we're gonna talk about Bachelor Nation drama. So it's being said that Michael Strahan will be, or could be one of the replacements for Chris Harrison. Now, you know, Chris Harrison has been facing some pushback and some backlash because of his supports of Rachel Kirkinell following her uh, attendance at that racist party that she went to in college. But as well as Michael Strahan, people are talking about Robin Roberts. Now, both of them would add a good mix of news, but show business to the show. But also, it'll check that diversity mark that The Bachelor and Bachelor Nation have been fighting so hard to have. But recently, it looks like ABC has chosen Emmanuel Acho to host the After the Rose special that will air on ABC following the final rose ceremony. Now, moving on to the drama that is going on with Rachel Kirkinell and the contestants of The Bachelor. So if you aren't aware, Rachel Kirkinell took to her Instagram page this past weekend and, and talked about the controversy that is going on with her and Rachel Lindsay, Chris Harrison, and Matt James, who is The Bachelor this season. And she is basically responding to all of the backlash that Rachel Lindsay is getting because the girl left Instagram. She disabled her Instagram account because of all the disrespectful and hateful comments that she was getting because she stood up and told everybody that what Chris Harrison had said and what Rachel Kirkinell had did was wrong. When she spoke to Chris Harrison on her show, she said, what would I represent if I were to go to that party? We all know what a black girl in the antebellum South would look like in that time period. So that was quite a rhetorical question, but also a time or a place for Chris Harrison to stop himself and check himself and put himself in her shoes to understand why this was such a problem. But I have to say, as far as Rachel Kirkinell's response thus far, I am quite impressed. She went on Instagram and let everybody know what accountability looks like. And I keep trying to tell myself that this entire experience with what's going on right now um, was a blessing in disguise because, you know, maybe, maybe it can wake a lot of people up and maybe it already has started to. And I think one of the most crucial parts to all of this is to talk to each other and to have these conversations, you know, to have these uncomfortable conversations and to learn to unlearn and to do the work. Um, we have so much work to do. Um, so with all of that being said, I am going to post some resources that I have either used um, or that have been highly recommended to me that I plan on using um, because the learning never stops. You know, we all need to continue to educate ourselves. Um, and I think that it's just where, where everyone needs to start with all of this. One more thing. If you are in my comments or defending me anywhere, telling people that I did nothing wrong, um, that there's nothing to be hurt about, there's nothing to be angry about or offended about, please stop. That's not our place to tell people what they can and can't be offended about. You know, that's, that's wrong. Um, and that's part of the problem. So please stop saying that I did nothing wrong. That's not true. You know, if, if you really want to support me, then, then encourage me to do better and encourage those around you to do better and 
to accept change and and allow others to learn and grow um, because we need to work together on this if if anything is going to change um, and if you yourself you know you're not understanding this then go on this journey with me um, just open open your heart to to learning and to educating yourself on this you know what I think that I try and understand where the division comes from with this and and why it's a controversial issue. And I think so many people think that it's it's solely a political problem. Um, and it's not. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's a humanitarian issue. It's how we treat others around us and it's us learning what we can do to see these unconscious biases and this embedded racism that this country has and and learning how we can help the people of color around us. You know, our, our black family, our black friends, neighbors, teammates, coworkers, everyone. Um, and again, thank you for holding me accountable. I, I'm so sorry. I know that doesn't change anything, but like I said in my statement, um, I just hope I, I can earn your forgiveness and, and your grace through my future actions. She was very sincere and genuine in her apology. She is making an effort to move forward and to become an ally and show what it looks like to take accountability for making a mistake. She knows what she represented by going to that party. She apologized and she is putting forth and making an effort to rectify her wrongs. Because of course she can't go back and change what she's did. She can't go back and not go to that party. But what she can do is take accountability for what she's done and move forward and make herself better, but also the people that are around her better as well. But with all that being said, is she only doing this because she's gonna win the show? Because if you've been watching The Bachelor, you know that there are three girls left. There's this girl named Brie, there's this girl named Michelle, and then there's Rachel Kirkenell. Rachel Kirkenell is the only non-person of color in the bottom three, or the final three. And I'm curious to know, is she doing this because she won the show? Now, you know that The Bachelor has been filmed and the episodes are just airing now. They have filmed these episodes months in advance. So the winner of The Bachelor has already been announced to the, to the contestants. The contestants know who wins The Bachelor, okay? We just don't know. The viewers just don't know. But there has been spoilers and bloggers and people talking about this and saying that Brie is one of the girls that goes home, okay? So that leaves Rachel and Michelle to be in the final two. Some bloggers and some people online have been saying that Rachel is the winner. She is going to receive the final rose. And I have to say, this would make sense considering how Matt James did issue a statement very late after all of this drama unfolded, saying that he was very and extremely disappointed by the photos that he saw of Rachel Kirkenell attending that party. And Rachel is working overtime to win back the public's favor, but also is she doing this to win back Matt's heart as well? Because you have to take into account how embarrassed he would be or has been choosing this girl over the other women of color, only to find out that she could potentially, or is, or potentially was racist. There is a Bachelor woman tell-all that, that airs tonight. We'll have to tune in to see what the women talk about and share their experiences of this past season. But as far as the final rose ceremony, we'll have to wait until March 15th to see exactly who wins the show. I can guarantee you the producers of The Bachelor are giddy, very much pacing to wait and see what the world has to say following the final episode. Now, moving on to Jim Acosta possibly almost being accosted this weekend at CPAC. 
Now I have to say, for the people that have attended journalism school or the people that majored in journalism, you know one of the things that you don't want to be is the story. Now Jim Acosta has become the story twice now when covering either Donald Trump or the conservative movement or the Trump movement. And while attending CPAC this weekend, Jim Acosta was with a lot of angry attendees, okay? The people at CPAC don't like Jim Acosta because of the things that Donald Trump has said about Jim Acosta. If you don't remember or if you don't recall, Jim Acosta had his press badge revoked after an incident with an intern. This incident was him asking Donald Trump some questions, okay? Donald Trump was over the questions, calling Jim Acosta rude and terrible because he was asking Donald Trump these questions and he wanted to move on to the next person. The intern went to take the microphone away from Jim Acosta and Jim Acosta took the microphone back. Um, kind of forcefully, not too much to hurt the intern, okay? It wasn't a yank and a push. He just like, no, I'm not finished asking my line of questions. Don, if I may okay, ask one enough. other question, Mr. President, if I may, if I may hey, ask Peter, one other ahead. question, are you worried? That's enough, that's Ms. enough. Mr. President, I, well, that's I was enough. gonna ask one of the, the other folks. That that's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Excuse President, me, that's enough. Mr. President, I had one other Peter, question, if I may ask, on, on the Russia investigation. Are you concerned that, that you may have I'm not concerned about anything with the Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you, that's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Now, I can only imagine what it must have been like for a person like Jim Acosta being from CNN to be in the White House during President Trump. I'm sure it was quite interesting. Along from not really having daily press briefings like we see now with Jen Psaki, um, doing a press briefing with Donald Trump must have been very agonizing, I have to say. Asking him questions, but also not getting a clear answer. It has to be very entertaining, but very frustrating at the same time. And I have the question why CNN sent Jim Acosta to CPAC. Was it because they knew that he would get a response out of the people that attended CPAC? Hey Jim, I'm Dave Marcus from The Federalist. When are you guys gonna start covering Cuomo? When are you guys gonna start covering Cuomo? No, I'm asking you a serious question. David, no, you don't. No, you don't. Do. No, you don't. We do. We have no, you don't. He killed ten. He killed ten thousand people, and is accused of sexual assault. Let me just finish. And you guys want to talk about Ted Cruz? If you don't mind. So what? No, no. When you don't mind, I'm going to start covering this interview. And then we can do it this way, maybe. Just because he's rude, I'll be rude. Sir, so let me just finish this interview, and then I'll talk to you, okay? If you don't no. mind. No. What do you mean no? I mean no. Well then, excuse me. I have an interview. Yeah. What are you gonna box me out? You're not tall enough. Um, when are you going to start covering it, Jim? I hope he had security because the the videos that I saw of Jim Acosta at CPAC this weekend was kind of frightening. People were surrounding him, asking him questions. One of the women in the video was like, get him, get him. antagonizing the man while he was doing an interview. So I have to wonder what CNN was thinking by sending him there. I know that it is his beat, quote unquote, but couldn't they just send somebody that was less problematic than to send him there? Because, child, that was a mess. And I have to say that the people that were surrounding him were only surrounding him because they felt like CNN wasn't covering the stories about Andrew Cuomo. And CNN has been covering those stories. They've been covering the stories of Andrew Cuomo allegedly covering up nursing home deaths, but also the stories of his misconduct as well. I remember seeing a story being done about the nursing home deaths for the first time on CNN by Breonna Keeler. So I don't really know why they feel like why CNN hasn't been covering these stories. It's probably just a narrative on the right to just feel like they are being attacked and they want to point fingers at Andrew Cuomo and the left for whatever reason. But CNN definitely has been covering these stories. Now moving on to the stories about Andrew Cuomo and the allegations that he's facing. Andrew Cuomo is being accused of misconduct by former aides one of them by the name of Charlotte Bennett, she says he asked about her sex life, but also whether or not she would have sex with older men. 
and was making comments that she interpreted to be his way of trying to figure out whether or not she was okay with having an affair with him or with other men, but she interpreted it to be about having an affair with him. Now, Bennett gave her account of this after a f another former aide by the name of Lindsay Boylan came forward and gave more details about her experience that she had made initially in December. She claims that Cuomo made comments about her appearance and also subjected her to an unwanted kiss. Andrew Cuomo denies these allegations and he apologizes for any misinterpreted comments that he might have made to them, but also for their feelings that his misinterpreted comments would have gave them or made them feel. Now, issuing an apology to, to women in this instance like this has to be seen as gaslighting. You're not apologizing for anything that you've done. You're not, you're not apologizing for what you did. You're apologizing for the way that they feel. And that is gaslighting, but also very insulting to these women if their allegations turn out to be true. Um, there is going to be a thorough investigation done by the Attorney General, Letitia James. I think they're doing an independent investigation, so she will choose a special prosecutor to investigate this. And there'll be determinations to see whether or not this is true and the consequences that he will have to face. But as far as Andrew Cuomo's political career. I think it's safe to say that on top of this, but also him misleading the public and lying to the public about the deaths in nursing homes, that it's as good as dead. And he might need to call Olivia Pope or somebody close to her to fix his political career or save it. And if not, I think it's as good as dead. Because how does somebody make a comeback from this? How do you repair your reputation after these allegations have mounted, especially in politics, which is a very, very dirty game. And the people that he's said to have mistreated and lied to are his constituents. And they have to vote him in again. And they are the people that will have say over his future in politics. All right, and moving on from that, we have to talk about Meghan and Harry, y'all. We have to. This preview of their interview with Oprah had me at the edge of my bed. Were you silent or were you silenced? I just want to make it clear to everybody, there is no subject that's off limits. Almost unsurvivable. Sounds like there was a breaking point. My biggest concern was history repeating itself. You've said some pretty shocking things here. Wait, hold, hold up, wait a minute. Just hearing him talk about how he felt like he had no other choice but to get his wife and child out of the royal family just shows how toxic that environment is. And the way that the British tabloids were covering Meghan, he just felt like it was completely disrespectful and he had no choice. Harry is a person that knows lost by the hands of the British tabloids firsthand. We all know the story of Princess Diana. We all know how the royal family treated her. We all know how the British tabloids treated her. But we also know in this preview that no questions are off limits. There is nothing that she is going to leave on the table. She's asking the two some very personal questions. I know that there's a lot of questions that the public has about the inner workings of Buckingham Palace and the royal family. And I'm sure Oprah is going to get down to the bottom of it. I hope she does at least. We'll just have to tune in and see what happens on this interview that airs on Apple TV+. Plus. I know I'll be tuning in. I'll be sitting on the edge of my couch with my popcorn and wine, soaking in all of the juicy drama that happens behind the scenes at Buckingham Palace. I wonder what the queen has to say about all this. Uh, I'm sure we won't get a response or a statement from her, but we'll probably be able to see what she has to say or make an assumption of what she would say. And that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you haven't already, be sure to give it a thumbs up, but also hit that subscribe button so that you can join us in the closet. And again, thank you so much for watching. Take care.